So, blah, blah, blah. what's up, everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Okay, so recently I asked you guys on Instagram about. Um, how I run like Shop Safi and how I'm managing uh, SME in like this current climate and I thought um, it would be really informative for you guys like if you guys wanted to know more about my brand and how I run it even though it's a really small brand and I just started out a few months ago some tips and tricks that I've learned across my journey and I would like to share that with you guys in case mm. Okay, so this video is going to be split up in 10 questions, no not 10 questions, 10 parts according to all the questions that I got. So I compartmentalized them into different categories as shown here. And then, yeah, so you can just go to the parts that you want so it's a more streamlined for you guys. But if you guys want to watch the whole video, then just fucking watch it. First up, we have foundation. Um, I'm actually reading off my laptop here. Okay, so foundation. How to start? Idea creation. What triggered the idea? Concept branding. Okay, so these are ideas that you should definitely think about before you start um, running your business and what forms an identity, uh, what is the identity of your brand. like? For me, I formed Shop Safi because I knew that was a viable outlet um, for Holok Holok. So I thought, why not leverage on that? And my brand basically is an extension of my online reputation. So that's what my branding is. But branding can always change. It's just good to have a somewhat clear-cut idea to help streamline um, your products as well as how you differentiate yourself from other brands which is super important in this competitive market my idea for shop my idea for shop my idea for shop Safi actually came about when um, I was on millennials of Singapore so when um, Holo Holo became viral and then I actually wore someone else's tea and I got like a few requests asking me where I got it from. So I thought like, oh, you know, there might be a market for me to intercept. And prior to that, I was actually fortunate enough to have my... Prior to that, I was actually fortunate enough to have my own collaboration with Kydra. So that actually allowed me to benchmark how much um, market value I have and how much reach I can attain in this market. Okay, things to think about when you form your own brand is definitely identity, right? So um, you should definitely conceptualize um, the idea that you want for your brand and um, what you aspire your brand to be and how you will make it happen. These things will actually help streamline the process of what you want and how you're gonna achieve it later on. And trust, if you don't really have a solid brand or a solid idea of what you are selling, it is very hard for the next following steps to go through because you are not able to focus and decide on what you actually want. <coughs> Moving on, we have money, which is also super important. That is like the backbone of every business. You need capital. Um, thankfully for me, um, I was, I have been working for three years now and through my work, I've been able to accumulate uh, capital and in this capital, I've invested um, in investment in that. I have invested some of my money, so I do have um, passive income. Is that what it's called? Yeah, passive income coming in that help. <coughs> It helped me set aside my money to help develop. But anyway, back to the most important. Just stop! Just stop it! Stop! No! Just stop it! <laughs> back to the most important question is how much did I actually use to start my brand? So I put in about 
like roughly seven thousand sing dollars before I started anything. And bear in mind, I only have three items in my shop. I only have a t-shirt, a crop top, and an iPhone case. And that itself already costs roughly about seven k to launch. So a tip that I can definitely give you guys is that maybe not open your shop with a large amount of product list. I wish I could have done that, but I don't have <clears throat> like $35,000 to spend. And you don't really want to take the risk to see if it might not work out. But if you do have a strong backing and a strong team around you, um, go ahead, but I'm just basing it off what I have experienced. So for design, I actually conceptualize the banana and um, the font and everything with my graphic designer that I work with on a freelance basis. So, um, his name is Ivan. He's a great graphic designer and he's a bit on the pricier side but he's super professional and this is like your first launch. It was my first launch. I thought, why not spend a bit more money to really lock down the creative aspect and the creative appeal of my merchandise before I push it out into the market and Ivan is someone that I really connected with in terms of aesthetic and he understood what I was trying to achieve so we worked on it together for like two months-ish two three months like it wasn't a very very laborious process it was actually super fun and I really enjoyed myself if you don't have any design background like me but you have a passion for art and design it's always good to seek assistance from other people that can support your own ideas and bring your ideas to life if it comes to design of your website as well i actually just use big cartel and they have like templates there that you can use and nowadays um there are many websites that support uh, young creatives or young entrepreneurs um, like Squarespace like Squares Squarespace is another viable website that you can use to create your own website if not you can always hire a graphic designer that do this professionally but it's going to cost you more and it's going to eat into the money that you can put into buying more products so it's about you to weigh your choices so graphics and design, linking back to the first point which is about branding and it's very important for you to tie those two, in, those two things in because um, to communicate your brand style and to communicate your brand idea, you only can communicate through visuals and I mean like the social media and stuff but even on social media templates, you create a persona and you create the idea through the aesthetic that you're putting forward. So it's super important to really keep those things in line and just like streamline your process by consistently going back to the same graphics and the same templates that you like. And definitely get feedback from your friends. Like your friends are like the most accessible point of market research. I think I've touched most of the points for graphics now and now we're moving on to shipment, suppliers. Oh no no, moving on to supplies. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This is point number four. So uh, many people are kind of in the dark about this, um, but you can easily source for suppliers from uh, websites like Alibaba and Taobao. Um, they do B2B transactions. So I sourced my... Um, uh, I sourced my uh, suppliers from Alibaba actually and um, it's a very very amazing platform that connects businesses together and this is like I really stand by it because these people that work behind the screens to uh, work behind the screens to create these relationships are very fast very efficient they reply in a matter of days and they get the contract done in like it's just like a week like as long as you can finalize your design and what you want they can do it really quickly and um we communicate through we uh we communicated through wechat or uh whatsapp depends on the supplier but they most of them speak uh pretty all right english 
If not, uh, they speak Chinese, but there's always Google Translate and friends to help you if you can't understand. Um, for me, how do how did I choose my supplier? I just went on a list of um, options on Alibaba. They have plenty, so it's pretty easy for you guys to just um, streamline and then you request. Oh, I keep saying streamline. Very easy for you guys to just pick what you want and you request for a sample so that in that sample then you can um, put your design onto it and then you can compare different products next to each other the thing about requesting for samples it's a bit of a sunken cost because it costs about like 20 to 30 usd per sample because they it makes sense when they uh, charge that price because you might not confirm the transaction so yeah just bear that in mind um, you can always see the reviews as well and like the type of quality uh, that the materials that they use um, they're all pretty transparent and they leave it on the Alibaba website so you just scroll down and voila it's there um, the tricky thing about working with China is that their MOQ is pretty high so MOQ is a common term used in um, my industry it's called a minimum order quantity yes so um, it depends for different uh, factories but most MOQs are pretty high so it's good to also check uh, how much they require you to make and if it's worthwhile for you to work with them because it, even though they might have a better quality product the MOQ might be higher and you might have to spend more money on inventory which might not be guaranteed to be sold so it's always good to evaluate all these things before you move into uh, the deal with the supplier for my brand um, i didn't really put in a lot of moq so my minimum order was pretty decent it was high but not that high and you don't want to risk wasting money on inventory or storage because it's all these unnecessary costs that will really affect your business in the long run and um, even a matter of like $500 or $200 extra like in the long run if you're paying all these extra amounts it's very hard for you to make a profit and it's not easy um, making a profit in, by having an online business especially if you're doing your own creative uh, merchandising instead of drop shipping. so drop shipping is something that uh, most People do actually, so they just really buy ready-made products from China or from India, wherever in the world and sell it on their websites at a higher price. So before you do something that is out of your own creation, you have to definitely consider all these things. Hey friends! I am currently typing in orders for my shop. So I do everything from like my mom's home office. In packages, we give out stickers as well, and we're currently making new ones. Part 5 is about shipment. So, um, how did I ship out all my stuff? Where did I store my products? And how um, I develop relationships with my shipping partners? Okay, so first question is... How did I initially ship my stuff? So initially, when I first launched, I was actually in London. So it was a very stressful period for me um, because I was not able to be uh, there to ship the products. And I only managed to close a last minute deal with a shipping provider like one week after I launched. And I was like, oh my God, I need to ship these orders out ASAP. And I didn't really consider how much money uh, it would be because I was just desperate to ship out my products. So um, definitely if you have space in your own house, my number one tip is just save money on rent and put it in your own house. Don't really engage a shipment provider unless you have um, a lot of money. Like shipment, by what I mean is like they store the products for you in a warehouse and they ship it out for you. So when you do that, they charge you additional cost for rent and they also charge you additional cost of per product shipped and there's also a base cost so like all these things add up and 
it's easy to underestimate when like they send you the contract but actually when the numbers come in it's quite a lot of money so second point um now that i'm back in singapore i use a platform called easy ship so i was shipping out postal from like singapore's with with tracking for like two days and like fuck singapore's they suck um it is cheaper but they don't have pickup so you have to manually pack all these items yourself and then head to the post office and then get the tracking numbers and then ship it out so <clears throat> in my opinion this, this is not okay this needs to stop now so in my opinion is like it's not worth the hassle and i rather like use another platform that is more integrated so Welcome to Easy Ship. So Easy Ship is a website that I use now. It is a fulfillment um, website. So they have like a lot of options for delivery. So you can choose the cheapest and they come to your house and pick it up. So that's how you should charge your shipping prices as well according to websites that are there and they have the prices stated. So in this day and age, I think there are quite a lot of um, Easy Ships but I like Easy Ship because it was a pretty integrated um, website and they break down how much you spend on shipping with the amount of product that you're ship. Um, what do you mean? Uh, okay, what I meant to say was that they give you the cost of um, shipment versus the revenue that you receive for your product. So it kind of gauges how much you are spending on shipping and um, maybe it also allows you to evaluate your price options for your goods as well and yeah i think we covered all bases for shipping so moving on the next one is, is marketing i think this is the most asked question besides capital so um, marketing for me i'm very thankful that i am an influencer and i have a larger reach than a uh, average person but I'm gonna give you my perspective on influencer marketing I think for SMEs if you don't have a lot of money to engage um, big-time influencers like people with more than 100k um, you can always look out for micro influencers or you know like every person now can really honestly do a job of sharing pictures and sharing videos online and it is a genuine connection that you can foster through like micro influencers like big brands like Shopee and Shopback I think even Grab gives out like tokens or like what's that one? Easy Buy they all engage micro influencers because it's a cheaper alternative and the reach is also not too bad I'm not saying that you should not engage me because I have the best reach yeah so another question that I got is how much do I spend on marketing? So I actually don't spend much money on marketing because I market my shop Safi through my own platforms and that was the most effective way of getting word out. But um, I've done like Instagram ads, uh, Instagram, yeah, mostly just Instagram stories and uh, Instagram posts and advertising on the platform. I would say like it's all right. Like unless you really put in a lot of money into Instagram ads, it's a good way to reach um, demographic. Like so, people, it's a good way to reach more people to your website. But if you're looking at the returns, it's not amazing. But it's a good way to connect with different audiences, like Malaysia, or different markets that you want to tap into. But I think the most effective way of doing marketing, in my opinion, is basically having a strong sense of identity and streamlining your process with um, certain influencers that you work with and um, creating strong visuals and campaigns like videos um, that you can advertise on Facebook. Facebook Marketplace is also a good option to advertise your business, by the way. Uh, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, like having a strong visual campaign really catches the eye of consumers because we are always on our phones and more than that we're always looking to consume so if they do find something that they connect with in terms of visual aesthetic it's very important to have that like 
people like immediately associate with your brand and if you're starting out my perspective on marketing is that you should take it slow like don't really force feed marketing because if you spend too much money on advertising it really eats into your sales and ultimately you might have a really high ROI but if you're spending like 60% of your money on marketing it's <clears throat> gonna definitely hurt your growth in the long run I think the next point is quite important as well so like <clears throat> it's about testing your product so before I launched I made it a point to test how many people are going to be receptive so I use like my collaborations with other people for example Kaidra to test how much uh, products I can actually sell and before that um, I mentioned the real talk situation so that was good as well um, yeah I think it's good to get feedback from your friends because they know you best and your family as well they know how you operate and they know They'll give you your honest opinion, like you want honest feedback, you don't want people to tell you that it's like, oh yeah, it's great, it's nice, like You want someone to tell you when it's not working or like if they have a better idea and they can use it um, Secondly, I also think it's important What's the other point? <laughs> to trust your own instincts, yes, okay, that is very important So it's always good to trust your own instinct because ultimately you may receive a lot of curveballs and a lot of opinions um, regarding what you're gonna do and like when I started uh, Shop Safi, I was initially quite hesitant because I thought it might not do well but I trusted my own instinct and I do not regret it it's a really enriching experience to run your own business it's not easy but you do learn a lot of things and you feel like way cooler than your friends Next point is assistance. So, do I have any employees? I have one. Um, she's an intern. I adore her dearly. She is honestly like the backbone of all my ideas. Like without her, I could not do anything. Secondly, we also have. Uh yeah. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah. What was I gonna say? Okay, so yes, um, I don't have a lot of money because I put it all into my manufacturing but it's good to have an in like interns because like, interns are there to work for experience and they don't cost a lot of money and it's also good to test out your, le uh, your leadership skills with them and how you work and operate as a leader and interns are just like amazing like i love interns they are so undervalued uh, but they are honestly like the reason why most businesses now can like actually go through with some of the stuff they're doing especially if you're a startup or like a business like mine where like we just started i just started and yeah honestly get interns okay so i started this business alone i did not want uh, external help because um it was like my baby and i didn't really want to collaborate with other people because like I personally feel like my brand is quite um, out there so like Holo Holo itself is a bit controversial and I thought I people do understand where I'm coming from obviously it's not that um, I don't want to work with people in the future I'm just saying for now and when I initially started I thought it would be better to just work by myself and um, work with freelancers because building a freelance relationship with people um, cost you like a one-time option and you don't really need employees honestly like we're all working from home uh, home now and it just shows like how the economy has shifted towards a more open-ended situation not saying that people who work in a full-time job are not needed but i'm saying like people like running your own business you don't really want to spend unnecessary money every month to pay but people that you don't really need all the time but um, if you do have a partnership, that's great. Um, I've worked with people before and I feel like sometimes I can be a bit too opinionated. So it can cause a bit of issues. And um, yeah, I'm not the type to back down as well. So I always want my, not my way, but I, if I have an idea, I want it to be fulfilled. <laughs> The next point is about finance. 
um, accounting and like do I profit from this blah 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 um, how did I price my products uh, I was very thankful to have uh, people to help me with this because uh, you know like your friends work in finance or like anyone that's good with math they can help you um, figure out how much you need to break even and the sunken cost that you have furthermore um, what I've learned is that if you're not good at something please ask for help and I'm not good with math or numbers but I'm good with having a rough idea about how things should be priced because I am a shopper and I don't really want to I didn't really want to price my things too cheap because I knew I didn't want to just target kids and if I, it was too cheap I wouldn't make a profit I couldn't do promotions if it was too cheap as well because that would eat into my cost so things that you should take into mind when pricing is that you are definitely gonna price something and discount it after because this is standard procedure for fast consumer goods my good is not super luxury or super atas where they don't need any like discounts or sale which is not even true anymore because like things on farfetch and netbot are on sale all the time and yeah people like to get it at the most affordable price point so when you do price something please think about the promotions they're going to do after to create more business because it's not going to be a consistent sale like sale for all all year round like nobody's Kylie Jenner Kylie Jenner is an iconic woman that managed to do it because she has such a strong brand <laughs> but for regular people like us you got to take into account all these business decisions when you price your products in terms of profit um we are doing my brand is doing okay so we broke even but all the money that i've earned from the business i've actually just put it back into the business so it's going to be using that money for the second launch that i'm actually working on now and yeah um if you are planning on doing a business don't expect to see you being to being able to take home money immediately is something that you have to nurture i don't think most business <clears throat> become profitable in the first instance they start it actually takes like a few months even a year or two yeah just watch shark tank like gives a good like business insight and really help in understanding like how businesses work okay hardest part about running a business is <coughs> coronavirus the hardest part about running a business is definitely the stress managing your stress so um a very iconic episode for me was when i was in london so my brand launched in january then i had to go for school so i was in school from like 13 gen and then i had to ship out all the products right so like i was like fuck i'm not there like what the fuck am i gonna do my shipping partner not his fault entirely it's also my fault was slow because of the time difference um and I couldn't ship out the products immediately so I really had like a meltdown I was like oh my god I just wasted fucking $7,000 on I fucking wasted $7,000 on oh my god and I was like oh my god I fucking wasted $7,000 I'm gonna fucking die like I could have used that money to buy like another bag or shoe or whatever like rent I could pay for rent like living better in London but I was, um, and I was like sobbing and plus furthermore I had jet lag so I was awake at like 4am every fucking day I was fucking miserable but everything went um, according to plan after so one thing about running a business is kind of like stress management you gotta learn how to like manage your stress properly and like manage your anxiety because you will definitely experience more problems than all of your friends who are not running their own business because they have job security and in um, running a business there is seriously no job security no security at all until like when it becomes a full-fledged operation and it earns money by itself you honestly don't have any security till then and even then um, you're affected by market situations that you cannot predict as well so yeah it's cray cray 
So yeah, manage your stress is important. Hi guys, so I'm packing your orders right now. So let me show you my. Actually, it's my mom's room, uh, but because she kind of like kind of retired already, so it became my stockpile. And um, last point, I think really prevalent is um, running your business during circuit breaker. So actually, thankfully for me, um, my online business has actually been doing very well despite circuit breaker. And actually, I think circuit breaker, circuit breaker has contributed to a large scale success because everybody's at home and people have a natural consuming habit. And thanks to Instagram, like people can always see my stuff now and Circuit Breaker has actually helped me increase my sales. Second point, shipment still happens during Circuit Breaker, it's not a complete lockdown, so platforms like Easy Ship, what I mentioned just now, still ships out products, just that it's a bit slower, so, um, but it's not cut, so you can still do business. Um, the government is supportive of small businesses and you can get loans uh, I did not do that I don't know why actually I should uh, I'm gonna get yeah no actually I don't I don't want to say it um, tax wise I just started doing my business so um, I don't know how to tax my business yet but I'll tax it end of the year and let y'all know and finally I just want to end my video um, about my future plans for Shop Safi so stay tuned for new launch that is coming soon, we'll be uh, doing surgical masks and proceeds. Proceeds will go to helping COVID situation and uh, foreign workers, either one, haven't decided. So stay tuned for the mask. Second point, stay tuned for our new drop as well. We are currently working on that. It's going to be an exclusive uh, new design on the Holoc t-shirt as well as hoodies and um, maybe a bucket cap. Uh, let me know in the comments what stuff you would like to see and we will create it for you guys. And thanks for watching! I hope it helps. Smell the lips. Yeah, thanks for watching guys.